In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can create a dynamic visualization, or in other words, a GIF file of DAM distribution over time. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial. If you want to follow along, there is a link in the description section of this video. You can click on that link to see the code that I am going over, and also other Python codes for different water resources engineering uh, Python codes and tutorials. All right, since I have explained every single line of code in here, I am not going to talk about every single line. This is a general overview of what the code does. And this is this code to me and this distribution of dams over time to me is scary because it shows how many dams have been um, have been built over time and essentially ma manually and manipulate the natural flow of water. All right, let's go through the code. So I am going to install two packages. One of them is right over here, Contextually. I'm not sure if I am pronouncing this correctly, uh, but what it does is essentially create base map for the plots that we are going to generate. And the other one is right over here. It's image IO, image IO, whatever is the right pronunciation is. Okay. And then I'm going to also import some other libraries, Python libraries over here that you can see. The main one is GeoPandas that allows me to manipulate geospatial data and other ones that I have explained right over here. So the first step is obviously running this first cell over here to install uh, the packages and import all the other libraries that I uh, just uh, told you. All right, once this step is done and the check mark is over here, you can close this. We don't need that anymore. Now, the second um, code cell over here, here's a step-by-step -step explanation of what it does. But essentially, what I want to tell you is that this cell is going to go to this website and download a geo package of all the dams in the US from NID. NID stands for uh, National Inventory of Dams. It's a USACE um, website, so you can download the geo package for, well, also you can download a CSV, comma separated file as well, but I'm downloading the geo package. Once the geo package is there, I will be writing that into a geo data frame and then printing that the file is downloaded. So I'm going to run this this is going to take some time because this geo package is large it's all the dams in the united states so it is going to take um probably around in my computer at least it takes about three four to five minutes once it's done we are going to talk about other steps in this process All right, so for me, it took four minutes and 24 seconds for this cell to be computed. Next, we are going to see the columns of the geodata frame that we just downloaded. Uh, why is it important? Because we want to know what information we have available for different dams. For example, you can see that this column gives us the surface area of the dam. This column gives us the normal storage of the dam. Spillway type is in this column. The name of the column, NID ID, so on and so forth, county, city, river name, lots of information can be found in this data. One of the information that we are going to uh, use is going to be the primary purpose of um, the um, dam and the year completed. Year completed ID is over here. This is the year that we can tell the dam was completed and also um, primary um, purpose. I'm looking around to see if I can see out of all of these where the primary purpose of the dam is. I cannot find it, but it's this is primary dam type. They should be a primary purpose somewhere over here as well. Uh, I will show it in the code later, but I'm sure that there is a primary purpose over here. Oh, there we go, here primary purpose ID right over here. So this is one that we want to have. The other one is NID storage and the other one is year completed. These are the three columns that we are going to use. Okay, so um, the next cell 
has multiple functions. We are going to, in this cell, define an area that we are interested. So um, we are going to focus on the contiguous United States. These are the latitude and longitude for uh, that area. And then we are going to filter all those dams that have the storage larger than 500 acre feet. You can change this number if you want to by going over here and change this number instead of 500 to something else. For me, 500 for this demo would uh, suffice. And then we are going to create a, a categorical type column of all the primary purpose IDs. What are these primary purpose IDs? These are essentially tell you if the dam is used for hydroelectric purposes or recreational purposes for irrigation and so on and so forth. So I'm going to run this uh, code over here. This should be pretty fast as you can see done. And now we are going to actually do the visualization and add some label to it. We're going to visualize all these dams that we have um, created. But um, let me actually run it first. Okay, this visualization is going to give us the frequency of um, the frequency of different types of dams. So you can see that majority of the dams, more than six thousand dams, are used for flood risk reduction. How do we do that? Because we have counted the values of the primary purpose IDs, and now we are plotting them in a uh, horizontal uh, bar chart right over here. Okay. Um, Okay, so majority of the dam, more than 6,000 are for flood risk reduction. And also what I want to mention, this is the primary purpose, not the sole purpose. So there are some dams that might have multiple uh, purposes, but this is the primary purpose. Um, there are many dams that the primary purpose for them is recreation, water supply, irrigation, and hydroelectric are the top five uh, frequency. Now, we are going to write a code that selects the top five most frequent purposes for us. So it's actually pretty easy. We have done this before. Now we are going to uh, make sure that uh, we are selecting from our geodatabase only the filter it to have the top five purposes using this line over here. Okay, so I'm going to run that. Uh, this does that for us. Now just to show you, I'm going to run this over here. Now you can see that I am showing you the uh, primary purpose ID column and then counting the values. You can see that essentially it kept all the top five for me and the rest uh, set them to zero. You can remove this or comment out this uh, cell as well because it doesn't do any function. I just put it over here to show you how it looks like when you run this cell. All right. And the last, uh, oh, the one thing before last thing is that we need to first create a graph to see all the dams to see if they make sense. So what this code is, does is to going to create a plot for you. I'm going to run it over here. Um, you can see that I have set the EPSG to 3857, which corresponds to the Mercator. And um, I have set my base map over here this should be open open street base map right over here you can see and i've set some text over here so there's text my name and the data that i've downloaded and these are the five top five frequent you can see that there are a lot of dams and remember these are not even all of them these are the ones that have the storage of larger than 500 acre feet Okay, so this looks good, but we want to make it dynamic. We want to create a GIF. And to make it better, we want to add a label over here that says year, and it counts the years, and it shows us how many dams are built in each um, year. In order to do that, you can see that over here, I have, I'm have i converting the year completed to a numeric um, character because it's uh, it's a string. So running this code to, it to, to um, uh, convert it to numeric. And then the next piece of code right over here, it's going to create multiple figures. Essentially, for each year 
it's going to, for each year that dam exists in this map, is going to create one figure for us, okay? And then after all these figures are created all the way to 2022, then we're going to put all of these figures plots together and create an animation or a GIF or a dynamic visualization to be able to see it from the beginning all the way to 2022. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm not going to explain all of these over here. You can read a little bit more and understand what, what's been done over here. Let's run this and I'm going to show you. So you can see over here that this is the geo package. Now what I'm running this code. So every time that it goes through a year, it is going to create essentially one data over here. So if I close it and open it again, you can see that it's starting from 1682 and 1695. It's actually creating all these data for me right over here to be able to view. So if you want to view that in 1682, if you double click on that, you can see that there is one point right over here, right, right side of the Washington DC area. And that was a recreational dam that is a recreational dam that was built or the building of it was completed in 1682 based on NID. Okay. So this was one. Now, if I go to, let's say 1831, you can see that more dams with different purposes are created over here. So what this code does, it essentially creating one image for the years uh, that data exists. And when all of these are completed, the next step is to go over all these years, load the images, and create the animation using um, the cell that I have over here. Okay, so I am going to, so far, if I show you, I have until 1925. This needs to go until 2022. So I am going to um, pause the video or make it go faster. And once it's done, I'm going to come back and tell you how this code works. All right. As you can see, it took four, four minutes and 28 seconds for me. Let's double check all the files. I'm going to go all the way down and you can see that 2022 is the end of the data that we have over here. Just to double check 2022, I'm going to open up that photo over here. You can see these are all the dams with the top five purposes for the dams that are created right over there. Okay. And the last thing is to create this GIF or animation. Remember that we imported, installed and imported ImageIO or ImageIO over here. You can change the um, frame per second right over here. If you want it to go faster, obviously this number should be higher. If you want to go slower, this number should be smaller. Okay, so six, I think for this tutorial, will do the job. Um, so I'm going to run this. So it will take um, up to a minute to create that. Uh, uh, GIF or animation for you, and then you'll be able to download that animation. Or if you don't want to download it, you can just visualize it over here. First, let me show you how you can download it. You go to the folder, scroll all the way down. You can see that the dams over time GIF is created. You can download it over here, but I'm not going to download it. Instead of that, I'm going to read it and visualize that right over here so we can see the progression of the dams over time by ourself. Um, let's wait for it. All right, this is the animation. As you can see, as the year goes up, there are multiple dams showing up. And to me, to be honest with you, this GIF is a little bit scary because to me, as a water resources engineer, it shows that how we have changed the course of water in the United States over time. And all of these dots, it, they might be a dot on the map, but they have implications in the natural world and in the world of water resources. So this is horrifying to me when I see this map. And our animation is completed in year 2022. One thing that I am interested, if you have um, data sets in your country, if you're not in the United States, that allows you to create this kind of animation, please do it and share it with me. I would be 
interested to see how that compares in different countries. All right, I hope you like this tutorial. Again, if you want to follow along with this code, there should be a link in the description section of the video.